Hey, this is Randy. In this video, I get to talk to Indara Star from the Indara Star Show and the author of A World Without Fear. Some topics we talk about are spiritual awakening, childhood background, sexual healing, and sexual embodiment, and also a little bit about her passion with the nonprofit organization World System Solutions. We uh, thank you. Welcome, Indara Sar, to this uh, collaboration, this call. Um, I'm going to keep it casual. I know we haven't really talked that much a person person, so we'd love to hear from you. I love your the background that you have. Are you in Hawaii? Yeah, I'm on the big island right now. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. How and did, you're in Vegas, yeah? Yeah, currently in Vegas and uh, office space. Nice white cool. background, but yeah, I love the... I love the background, just like, that's awesome that you're in Hawaii. I have a couple uh, friends there and visited a couple of times. Just a lovely place. I mean, a huge, like a bunch of islands, of course, but um, yeah, it feels, it feels really spiritual and majestic and slow um, with any island, I feel like. Yeah. Um, it is very spiritual and it feels like another dimension for sure. I lived on Maui for nine years and um, then going back to the mainland, it was like, it just feels like a different world. And, and then each island is, has their own specific vibration and um, healing properties. So it's, oh, wow. it's pretty interesting. As you said that, kind of like the air tone came in. Uh, Ooh, galactic. the air. Yeah. The yeah, the air tone, kind of like some resonance towards that. Just the connection of, I mean, it's a law of one reference, but basically it's connecting into uh, kind of like density is washing over. This is guidance. Um, if you resonate towards that, like higher self stuff, guidance, galactic. So you, did you do a, a collaboration with Bridget, I've heard? With yeah, well, we we were friends for a while and then I recently interviewed her on my podcast and she's had me on one of her YouTube videos. So we just, yeah. Yeah. We just, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, it's fine. I didn't, there's not much more to say, but um, yeah. We, yeah, I feel like there's a handful of us like, people like Bridget likes to call them star seeds that are just here for this specific reason to kind of transform and uplift and evolve consciousness. And I feel like you and I are kind of in that. Likewise, yeah, no coincidences. I think we met at a manifesting meetup and you're in Hawaii, I was in Las Vegas and that kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, how did, yeah, how, like, do you mind talk, telling me about your story? Like, how did you, what was your awakening like or like what went yeah. through your life? Yeah, so I was actually in um, California when we met, and oh, yeah, and I had been on the in California for a year during that time, and I just got back here to Hawaii. But um, yeah, so it, it's interesting you ask about that because when I met you, I was at my mom's apartment in Ventura, California, and my mother like somehow my soul blueprint was to have a very mentally ill mother who was like unable to care for me so i had to like experience a lot of like emotional suffering at a very early age like age one and a half and i've been kind of recovering from that for um many years like my whole life but i've also have innately within me that like star seed code of like pure like joy bliss exuberance like really deep soul connection to like, to, yeah. And so, so there's like the human aspect of me that was really damaged by that, my, my mom relationship and like family stuff. And then there's a part of me that's just like, and I've always, I've been working my, a lot of my life from like age 11, I got really depressed and was like, really just didn't want to do anything. And then for many years in college, I just drank and just was like, not doing anything with my life like very intentionally and then but i always knew like i had to get back to that little girl who was like so happy and blissed out when she was like five so i finally think I've, i'm getting there and i'm 
and along the way, like refining and maturing and like developing. It's just so fun to to like to yeah have all the tools that I've had because I lived on Maui for like eight years where I did a lot of healing work and just gathering tools, gathering, gathering, gathering communication and just like a connection with the earth and so many amazing things. So yeah, that's where I met Bridget was on Maui at a dance event. So, so awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of your, your past sounds a lot like mine. Like I came from really? uh, emotional abuse. I know it's like, I didn't even know about like what that really was. And even, you know, wasn't diagnosed with it or even like they wouldn't acknowledge it. My mom watched this or my family watched this. Maybe some people, you know, can admit that. Um, but really it's just, I mean, it's like there's forgiveness or acceptance, but I still have that like PTSD part or in the anxiety, the panic attacks, the thoughts. And it's like, it is generational, but for, but for sure, like she had a really traumatic experience, like losing your parents um, when she was really young. And basically there's a lot of like OCD hoarding. She, she came up from a, a poor um, uh, village in, in China. So it's basically a lot of that, but you know, and you know, I was born here and it's basically, you don't really have that outlet to talk to, whether it's like mental health or like emotional health or spirituality, it was basically do this, do this. And even it's, it's almost like a visual shell of like this emotional disconnection, like even with relationships, it's been like difficult to express or even convey, even, even with loved ones, it's still hard to convey. There's still remnants of anxiety. It's gotten significantly better. Um, but I definitely feel like, like you said, the tools, the, the empowerment, the mentors, the connections we have along the way, it really like elevated that level. So I definitely have this empathy and heart out for people going through similar situations like depression, anxiety, uh, you know, like their spiritual awakening of like, there's so much more to just this uh, human side and that we are cosmic beings. And yeah, no coincidence for sure how we have similar paths and experiences. That's awesome that you uh, um, yeah, shared with that and kind of get, got to know you a little better. I know we met at this meetup thing that I hosted online and basically it's like building that foundations of manifesting. It's like, how can we co-create and tune into um, what is it that we truly want in this life? And there's just so much that is possible for sure. Totally, you, you named it all right there. Um, navigating like the emotional aspect of like depression and anxiety and being like, that's not our, our true nature. Like, that's like a trauma response that's not it's not normal and like being able to navigate that and like consciously be like I don't want this I want tools and help to get out of this and I want to like you said live the life that I really want because we are co-creators with God with each other we are God like that's that's the that's the philosophy and so once you get once you work on clearing all that you can actually be that creator person Oh yeah, definitely. And there's a lot of layers that like, even I love that you say that we are God because it's true in the essence of it, but then it's also the societal part of like, no, there's, you know, the Catholic background of like heaven and hell, sinners, you know, sin. And, um, you know, you have to do things for God that is outside of you. And it's like, for me, especially lately, I think that that's coming big too, because, um, you know, family, some of my family is, uh, foundational fundamental christian well, I mean, not fundamental christian but a, a christian background it's not that like hardcore but still there's those beliefs of right and wrong um that kind of hard kind of get hard to connect and feel through and we still love and accept each other as much uh, as much as we can but the foundation of like the nature of reality like why are we here as wanderers as old souls and you can feel that like tangible stuff from you know our parents or family or generations or society um uh, and yeah, it's, it's crazy to, to really navigate it because, you know, not everyone's going to resonate with us. Not everyone's going to hear what we're saying. And even these belief systems of God is out there or what is right or what, what is wrong. In essence, it's like, I think everyone wants to be happy in general, but you know, it's like, we, we can't, not everyone's going to choose because they don't have the tools or they're not aware of who they truly are foundationally. Absolutely. I like how you kind of highlighted the word choose because 
that's been an issue for me a lot of my life is like indecisiveness and not thinking I have a choice. And I feel like that's a big deal right now. It's like remembering that we have choice to do anything we want to say yes or no to, you know, it's like, right. I don't know. I don't know if like, if I'm, if a lot of people are unaware of that, like, oh, the free will aspect. It's like, we have free will. That's why we're here. But I don't think a lot of people know that. Yeah, they, they don't. It's a collective thing too. And I mean, I kind of mentioned that we weren't going to go to Law of One, but it sounds resonant. So in the Law of One raw material, it is obviously channeled by um, this material called, or this entity called Ra. Apparently they were there in Egypt and um, what's it called? Like the improve, well, it's basically teaching oneness and allness, but for lack of a better word, they're considered aliens or extraterrestrials channel, but isn't too hard to believe if you're into that stuff or you're into like Bashar or um, Abraham Hicks, like law of attraction stuff, like they're all channeled by something like higher source. So again, this thir third density that we're on, we're transitioning in the fourth density uh, as the theme is love and understanding. But the third density for most people, most beings is the choice of service to self or service to others. Service to self being like you're, you're using this power to enslave people or to um, enroll into uh, this power and things that don't really benefit the whole, but that's still a path. But then uh, service others kind of like path of like serving others, knowing that each other is yourself, that everyone else is curious too. So it's this transition and, and that even wanderers or light workers, they're coming from higher densities to really, like you said, in the beginning, like raise the vibration, kind of realize who we truly are, help ascend or transition, whatever you want to say, which may kind of sound weird, but really it kind of makes sense if there's like a calling, if there's like people watching this and they're like, I don't know, I feel like alien or I feel, you know, not human, but it's not, it's not even about human or not human, human or not alien or God or not God. It's like, we're all one, we're all in this together. Everyone's experiencing something different, but we're all on this journey together. Yeah, you are so good at, at explaining that. Thank you for just sharing a brief synopsis of the law of one and yeah, I like that service to self or service to others. It's uh, very clear. The difference is very clear. And uh, we've been like trained to be service to self. And that's like being in fear and being like, no one's gonna look out for my needs. I have to like make sure I'm okay. And like, that just breeds this like not good energy, I feel like. And I've talked yeah. about it in a podcast. I just recorded actually that I haven't put out cause I'm like, it's kind of sensitive but it's about like slavery like that's a real thing and like yeah. do we want to be slaves Cosmic like no slave. yeah I, I hear you yeah yeah like th that is a trigger word because you know people have their own images connotations of that but if you don't yeah. know your god it's kind of, or even an infinite field an infinite being then it is really disempowering it's like you are suffering you literally believe that everything else is separate the illusion of separateness that is suffering it's like we're we're taught to accrue from a belief system of certain society or even generations of like religion and stuff but as like if we're god as powerful creators with their imagination we can really shift into the reality we want we are choosing that reality too and the crazy thing is that they're choosing it too and it's almost like accepting like what like where they're going through and because they're yeah. us as well absolutely yes absolutely that's a great a great reminder of acceptance um, yeah yeah law of one's great i thought you were joking but I kind of you know like with the like i don't know what i said on on the message about the law of one so it's good i think you probably connect on that level with um finding it right before manifesting too huh finding what uh, like law of one and like the those kinds of books like about metaphysics and like reality yeah. creation yeah i feel like that's just one story like you were saying it's like channel thing and it's it's one way that that message is delivered and i i resonate strongly with it but i've never really like read the the stuff or like no yeah so it was 
So, I mean, even the starseed part, the, like, how did you get into that energy? Honestly, Bridget helped me because I didn't know, like, what, I knew that I was that, but then she would keep saying, like, this is what a starseed is, and I'd be like, am I a starseed? Like, because it's just a terminology of a type of person who's highly empathetic and who's here to, like you said, transform the world or help, help with ascension and and I was like, well, yeah, I can, I can own that. So I, I just start slowly started like owning it. And um, yeah, she's Bridget's really into the law of one and Bashar. So it's almost like that lineage came through her to help my process, which is amazing. Cause I didn't have to listen to all the stuff. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, whatever resonates too. It's like, that might be the most effective, like direct way for you. It's like a snap of the fingers like you're connecting into that true self of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, there's so much that we could talk about, but on the, the train that we're on, it's, I'm just tripping out that we are having this conversation right now and that like where the world's going with, with um, the computers and connecting um, on Zoom all the time and sharing, like, I feel like YouTube started it and like Bridget like paved for me, she like paved the way of what's possible to like reach a lot of people with a lot of, with valuable information and by consistently showing up in this way. And now I'm wanting to do it consistently. And then, but then there's this whole world online that I'm a part of with like this nonprofit I'm a part of that's completely online and everything. And it's like, we get to live in this virtual world that, where we're co-creating like a world mm. that isn't yet physicalized, but we know it yeah, that it it's feels. going to be. Yeah. yeah, it feels like we're already there. Like, you don't have to go to the airplane. It's just like, you're there, yeah. I'm here. And there's like a sense, I was talking, there's a, talking to a friend about this. It's almost like um, you could feel it too. It's almost like that connection of, it's like this new learning that we have because we're so accustomed to Zoom now that there's like a sense of, you know, if we're listening or if we're connecting or if we're not, like there's alignment with that. And like, as if we're talking in real, like in without Zoom, it's like the dynamic becomes like clear. It's almost like this is good. This is a new thing. This is the thing. Yeah. And yeah. And I've had fear around like other people imposing fear about like AI or um, just technology taking over. And it's like, well, if you have that fear, like then you can't use technology for the good. So I've chose to completely ignore that and be like, okay, well, you know, and even Instagram people say like, oh, it's not good or Facebook's not good. But like, if you use it correctly, just like any tool, then, then you're in, I don't want to say in control, but you're like the, the master of, it's not going to control yeah, you. Your you God know? and your God, yeah. for sure. It's yeah, like, yeah it goes back any fear is fear right like even even yeah instagram like, i get it there can be social engineers and stuff that kind of like create it so there is this agenda or toxicity and like it's hard to use hashtags but you know if that bothers you then it bothers you if you can see past it you know more power to you to more to use it for good because that vibration is like always matched and it's reciprocated in some level so it's like even if you're not getting whatever the audience or the feeling it's like it's there's always some momentum and that's like my approach on things just like putting stuff out there in different platforms because the feeling for me it's like it's going to be it's temporary it's like my post go post go you know and what's yeah. what makes me happy is when people feel like get it and they feel empowered and they feel like they can roll the techniques the empowerment the coaching um the subconscious stuff like the ahas and insights that was makes me happy so when people like when the people are meant to receive it and they get it yeah you know like it's like a it's a loop that i really enjoy yeah it's like you make that true connection you're you're being felt and they're receiving the, ben the benefit yeah, definitely yeah. yeah it's been fun to see your creativity on instagram like with yeah, it's just fun. And then you get to like be inspired by like we're coworkers. Like, hey, yeah, hey, that's a good idea. Doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it feel, feels like that. It feels like you just kind of get that uh, support, feeling the support and, you know, brothers and sisters of the sorrow, or, like law of one. Yeah. So it's like a term. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's cool. Oh. Star seeds are 
we're gods, goddesses, that we all are. And, yeah. Know. Cool. So would, do you want to talk about the world systems that you're part of? Yeah, I mean, that's a great um, thing to talk about because we were just talking about it, basically. It's like, okay. well, the more we connect and collaborate and like find people that are in resonance and want to do the same things as us, the, the more we can co-create together, the better the world will be because we're, and the premise of World System Solutions, which is a like one year old nonprofit that I just um, joined up with in like June. And I apologize if the sound is weird. It just started oh, no, raining cool. really hard. Good luck. <laughs> that's a beautiful luck. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Um, yeah, I love rain and water. Anyways, so World System Solutions is a nonprofit. I just joined up with them in June or July of this year, 2021. And I'm really inspired by the approach that they're using to uh, transform our society. It's basically conscious collaboration on the internet, um, creating learn education that's all for free and creating ways we can all work together for free, basically. They are creating a system called Chloe, which is like Facebook, but it's um, its purpose is to consciously collaborate. Like there's a, for a better world. It's not just like, hey, just post your photos and post what you're into, but it's like more focused and directed towards like working together consciously to create a harmonious earth and so it's just at the very beginning and but i've had great experience so far because it's really about getting rid of the ego and getting rid of fear nice. and being the being the like embodied like kind of god self or human that we so that we can come together and co-create and there along the way of course there's going to be ego trip ups and this and that but with that there's conscious communication education that we can that we can like deliver with it or there's people to support and hold space and there's a process that we're like we're like experimenting on ourselves like how do we consciously create together and what's the process and and we need to do this so that we can like evolve in, so we can like yeah. evolve into a out of like the destructive humanity that we've been right. into and into like a life-giving like evolve, evolve yeah. into a new humanity yeah, and so that's the purpose. And I've been um, recording. So John Jones is the co-worker, or the co, <laughs> we're all co-workers, the co-founder of the organization. And he wrote a book called World System Solution, uh, no, a, a World Without Fear. And I've been recording it on my podcast as like a free audio book. I used to love um, Audible as like getting, listening to audiobooks because I'm more of an auditory learner. And but then you have to pay a monthly fee and they don't always have the books you want. It's kind of like Netflix or something. And gotcha. which is, yeah. and so, but I, but I was like, I'm just going to make a free book. Like I'm going to record it myself. Like I don't have to be super professional to re like record someone's book. So I picked his book as my first one. And it's all about how to quickly and efficiently re resolve and dissolve fears because mostly we're mostly a lot of people are subconsciously run by their fears and um and the root the main fears are fear of death and fear of ab abandonment and that stems that is the root of all like um dysfunction in the world all negative emotions all war blah 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 and so yeah anyways that that if you get there and you get through that book then you're kind of ready to like do yeah. this work yeah, the I'm, conscious uh, work. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we were talking about fear too, because I think there's that kind of like fear as in false evidence appearing real. Yeah, and even that too. It's like a lot of us are scared of death, like, but we haven't really investigated it. I mean, like, uh, it's pretty hard to shift, like, unless you have like a near death experience or you you connect in a meditative state or whatever state or kind of like have a thought process. Like, okay, well, a lot of these philosophies kind of celebrate death. What is that? What is you know life? What is conscious? Why are we even here? But like even a lot of our systems now, it's like it's kind of based off of the fear. Like even money, a lot of money is made off of fear. Even systems are made out of fear. But is it really 
fear or is it giving more fear to the human experience? Because I think if you're yeah. a scared person, then it's just like you're really losing your true identity as a being of God. And it's like, I don't think God would want us to fear. Like what God, if it's an external God or a patriarchal God, it's like, I don't think it wants you to fear. So again, it's like some mixed beliefs and um, interpretations of life and death. But really it's like, in essence, we're here to have fun. We're, we're gonna be in joy and to feel good and to be expressions of God. So again, it's like, yeah, fear always is, is crazy. I mean, even now it's like, it seems to accelerate, but even in another way, it's like, if you just dismantle fear well enough, then it'll generate your reality as well too. Absolutely. I'm just gonna close this window because I'm getting rained on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I love that you brought up life and death and fear versus love because the that's what I, I'm just the more I live, the more I notice how simple I, life can be. And it's like it's simple. It's like black or white or it's love or fear or it's life or death. So which one do you want to choose? Do you want to live in fear, destruction, uh, darkness, suffering, or do you want to live in life, uh, love, life? um light and and it's yeah and and it's it's hard to believe it's hard to stomach but so much of the world is has been made like you said from a place of fear and that's not where we sh could be creating from because when we do it just creates destruction like the whole world is being destroyed <laughs> so. Yeah, but there's also a paradox on that too. It's like, I mean, yeah. one point of view, it's like Earth or even people don't need healing. It's all essentially it is the subjective part. Even if we want to intentionally heal, it still has to come from our own consciousness and our subjective reality of the healing part. Because it's like if there's a problem, we can't fix the problem. We have to see that there there's already a solution. That they're all based off of wellness. Because if we, I mean, a lot of times people want to just go heal because there's like a issue or problem, but that energy can be not alchemized. So I guess yeah. my point is like, it, it is subjective. Like we could see higher, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, that's the wrong word, but like if we're in the subjective experience and we heal our pains, traumas, belief yeah. systems, then we yeah. can shift um, the reality. Cause that's basically how the mechanics of reality is with that if we are healing ourselves, the other the external and really there is only internal but it's that process of self-inquiry and self-awareness and stuff and the yeah. tools that you mentioned yeah. yeah thanks for sharing that, that that everyone has their own perspective and their own journey and their own path of healing and coming to realization of what what's going on <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, it's it's a trip. And then you, you meet the right people at the right time and kind of like you're mm -hmm. talking to yourself or appearing like self-appearance and seeing what is it, like what what is it that we're tuning into? And I think obviously it's a, a higher self of ourselves and for the collective. So um yeah, feeling into that. It's like I think there is a lot of beauty, grace, joy for for this new earth that is already here. You know, I may not see it in the visual senses, but it's still there. It's like, it's not separate from us. And I think that's like at the, the higher vibration goes or that path to spirituality and connections, the more we can really usher in this new energy of New Earth. Yeah. Which we are doing for sure. All of us, even if they don't know it. Mm, absolutely. I love your perspective. It's very um, expanded and um yeah comforting perspective and, and it reminds me of flow which is what you were talking about that you wanted to talk about today it's like yeah. like you're in the flow you just wait for your synchronicities and your 
Yeah. And and um, you trust. Well, well, not not wait, but I guess it feels like waiting, right? But when you're flowing, it's just like it just comes to you. You're not even waiting. It's like you're just in this feeling state. You know, you want to talk. You know, you want to connect with people. You want to connect with Dara, and you just have these like spontaneous talks. And yeah. you kind of get like downloads from the dots and that support is always there. We kind of have to just like access it with flow or just an intention, like a prayer or meditation. So we're yeah. connecting on that. It's always there. That flow is always there. The the lessons, the the grace that is us is is always there. And I feel like um us feeling into it. Sometimes we do have to slow down. Sometimes we have to take action, whatever it is the hints, like the downloads come in unexpectedly. Yeah, yeah it was, it's been hard for me to, to learn how to flow. I've, I've like, I think I've been in the collective mindset of like having an agenda or having a plan that I really want to work out. That's the same thing as an agenda, but having like wants that are, you know, they're so, narrow focus that you just for can't really see what else could be and that has been detrimental for me and I've had to really learn how to flow and yeah I wonder how you learned how learned that too yeah there's I mean there's always like that 3d desire or you know even like so let's start off like basically survival right people always think of um money or do I have enough do I have enough the scarcity mindset but it's like even if we get the foundation right that it is only infinite abundance like even the thought of lack is created by the mind but like our true essence is like we're one with the creator one with the universe and you look up with the universe it's like it's not that it's separate from us like without us there wouldn't be the universe it's like (laughs) without our existence there's there's no universe there's nothing and it's basically it's it is a paradox too it's like out of nothingness everything came even our awareness but people don't want to go that deep. They're still even in the anxiety and trembles of there's not enough, there's lack, which is, you know, it's it's basically a lot of conditioning and totally, totally understandable and just And I give compassion, acceptance towards that because of that's just how our thoughts are. And even just the, a trajectory of us as human beings, like thinking that way. I think we're in this new stage and if, you know, if it's old soul, sources, whatever name it is, it's like, it's kind of like ushering this, the truths that we're much more than the thought. We're, we are this conscious awareness that we share and that does not have any lack in it. There's no lack of finances, lack of career, lack of well-being, all the full well-being, all the graciousness, all the joy, the spirit, infinite spirit is all there and it's in us. It's here now and the only moment is here. So when you're asking about flow, it's like, it, it is that body movement. It's like, it is getting like a challenge and a goal and then trying to like reaching it and feeling good about it. Like I create lists, like what makes me flow? Like, how do I feel good? Even with clients, it's like giving appreciation lists. What do I feel? Or like, how do you like think 10 things that make you feel good, 10 things that you like thinking about that make you feel good and then keep on putting this momentum of appreciation every single day and enjoying music and enjoying the life like i'm blessed to do what i want to do but i mean i think i can't do anything else because it's it is that flow that i'm attached to and it's not like the flow is gonna discard me or anything because i'm one with the universe and so is everybody else and that's like the, the main thing of like that is flows like we're, we're all tethered to this it can't be released it can't be taken away from us awareness existence cannot be taken away, uh, away from us but we get into these thoughts of misalignment of like we're separate that me and you are different and it's like that's where the anxiety comes in or the the feeling and the sensations that we're not one with each other and the uh, primary truth of existence of our conscious awareness is we are one and there's infinite resources and it's tough to um get this into people with you know it's like no we're here i'm this you're that and we have limited resources on earth on the cosmos or in the country and they could get into like economics and stuff and you know like they they only see what's in front of them 
but it's like this whole universe is huge and our imagination encompasses all of that um so again like, i think what we're doing is powerful teaching our tools being those teachers these spiritual doctors um empowerment coaches manifesting coaches and really teaching the way of generations not as a person but as who you truly are as this one infinite creator as the infinite field yeah and that's who we are like literally essentially but it's, again it's like something we can't just you know say people there are a certain energy that resonates towards this and for sure and then there's other levels of like we still have to we still have to like change our communication so that you know we could connect with those people on that level and their loved ones and even with animals and the plants so for sure it's it's practice it's i mean i still have a long way to go and what i want to do and but it's not really doing it's like I, again it's like i'm i could be in the pattern of like doing and achieving because of that old rat race mentality of like i gotta do this but it's already done that's like that's a trickery. It's like everything that we've ever wanted is here now. Nice. Beautiful. Yes. Amen to that. Uh, yeah, I think what made what made, what made me really happy what, what you said was communications. Like we have to learn how to communicate better. And I think that's what one of my purposes is, is just and my passions. It's like, how do we communicate? in a more effective way, in a more loving way, and a more, in a different way than we've ever learned, known. Like, what if we could be telepathic and we just don't remember? So how do we practice that? Or how do we like, you know, because if we are all, are all one, like you can do tap into anything you want. Um, you you yeah. can, you can. It's like, it, yeah. it is like it, even going in fourth or fifth density, like that's the theme of telepathy. And yeah. even examples is internet. It's like sometimes you think of someone and then they, their name pops up. It's like that yeah. connection of, of um, oneness. But literally, yeah. we're, we're all shared in this awareness. So I think maybe what telepathy is, is really putting that intention and even synchronizing with our, our energies and really feeling the oneness. Because everything, it is that illusion of separation. Again, it's like, there is this illusion, this veil that we have all put on in this density that we're not one, that we're not, that we are separated. But in essence, it's like, it again, goes back to our identities. Like we identify as even this body, like I am Randy Sin, or I am this body, I'm this person. But truer, if we, if we, like one step removed is this awareness. And one step beyond that is the godness, the all things of, of everythingness that, we truly are the essence of everything is us that we're one consciousness sharing this experience yeah. and this journey and everyone everyone has their own addition to infinity like your experience okay. adds to it my experience my journey adds to it the plants adds to it um yeah. other people family loved ones everyone yeah everyone yeah. has a path yeah and i like like what i like about what you said about is that or it helped me to more solidify an image of us being all one it's like to get expanded to look at the globe and be like we all live on earth when you look at a picture of the earth you don't see little specks of people you see just like blue and green like yeah we yeah. are that that's us like yeah you know, it's like but the, then you get zoom in and you're like oh there's a, a tan one a, a lighter one yeah. a, Right. Tall one, and, and you're like what are all these differences <laughs> yeah yeah i love that i love yeah. that analogy too um yeah. even let me just let me get a a picture of that because i actually want to do it. yeah because it, it makes sense it's almost like we're all non-physical it's like if you look at a picture of uh, earth around the cosmos and it's on a 2d um 2d thing it's a flat just like a flat circle yeah, yeah it's yeah. like a flat circle and it's just like that's that's space so in essence it's like we're we're space we're in the same we're made out of the same stuff the only thing is physical is because we're, we have a mental concept of physical so <laughs> everything that's constructed with physical is like is yeah. um, really it's actually not physical yeah yeah that can, Let me see if I can get that can get really trippy um Especially for someone like me who 
is already kind of spacey. <laughs> it's like having to ground and be like, okay, this we're in physical reality. Like these are chairs, this is a floor, like, and how to honor that and be like, we plant trees, we water them, they grow. Like to, to immerse in the physical more is like, has been my challenge. And so, yeah, I think there's, and there's other people that need to immerse more in the, the unseen or the, the non-physical. And that was the other thing I just wanted to mention. Something that's been helping me a lot lately is, if you don't mind me sharing now. Yeah. Is like just praying to the angels and the my guides and my higher self um, as much as often as daily or more. It's being like, I need your help. Please help me manifest this. Please, sh um, like I'm stating what I need and what I want to see, the, the assistance that I need and just that's a one tool that I have for manifesting because um, speaking, I think, is really or writing is really a big part of that. And um, and knowing that that someone is listening to you, even if you cannot see them, someone is listening. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Always. It's like you're not alone. And it's like you're always supported. Yeah. Uh, apologies about that. I was clicking. I was trying to get the earth thing, but I don't know if I uh, can get it. Up. Oh, you want me to try? Uh if you can, I mean, I think it's just a few more clicks. I don't know if I'm getting on the yeah, same you, website. You can do it. Yeah, I need that. I need that support. Yeah, you got this. I got I this. I want to see the earth that you've picked yeah. out of all the earths on the internet. Right. <laughs> I found one, but I don't know if I can share my screen. Give me permissions for it. Oh, but they. Wow, it's so beautiful though. <laughs> yeah. A lot to choose from. Right. Uh -huh. Just so amazing that humans could actually like get a photo of this. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a snapshot of that. Like a really long GoPro. Yeah, I think I need a new computer. It says like low resources coming in. <laughs> What's like, your computer? I think you can see it. Oh. Yeah, so it's kind of like this. Oh, I okay. see it. Yeah. Cool. So again, it's like, I mean, maybe we feel this is tangible, this is physical, but like, if you kind of zoom out, everything, even the moon, it's like, everything's 2D. If it's made out of the same thing, it's just made out of space. But like, we still have this filter of like, Earth is, has rock and water and all of it. But even that, it's like, it's like, it's how we define what water and how like that sensation of what water is, and the rocks and everything. If you just like see it like here, it's almost like it's just part of space. Like this is equally to space. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, it's kind of like, it took me to another perspective, like even ocean, even rock, even all of us, it's made out of the same mm -hmm. thing. Even space and the moon is made out of consciousness, mm -hmm. awareness, love, light. And that's basically foundations of first density of what law of one talks about. But yeah, it's crazy. It's, I mean, even scientists, they're all basing it off of physics. Not, not that it's like inaccurate or not true, but it's still based off of the physical part and everything like, outside is the not explore because it's it's here it's consciousness so yeah not just my school <laughs> i know you didn't want me to i know you weren't super interested in astrology but you can yeah. this just reminded me of astrology because okay when you look at that picture you think what you you just it's just nothing or it's just a swirl of image of energy or and then, but like you were saying, we are that, we are the wind, we are the water, we are the earth. Um, then I go to astrology because it helps me particularly to differentiate life, but, but to do it in alignment and accordance with the natural world, with the natural law, because when I know, and because then I can develop, it help, has helped me develop a healthy ego instead of just letting my ego run and do whatever it wants to be like, okay, I have these particular qualities, particular um, qualities, qualities of air and fire. And how do I work with these qualities that I have that I see around me or I feel inside me that I'm needing to give or bring um, because each element is so fundamental to our existence, even though like just that makes up this physical reality. So I like to use that as like the building blocks of my my universe because it helps me to just figure out what's going yeah. on here. 
yeah. yeah you can go deep into that if, you, if that flows with you like, yeah. what is your your sign and uh, i guess what you call it, nodes I, I know people are like kind of very particular like the sun the moon and the houses yeah. i'm I'm not too familiar with it. No. Yeah, so everyone has a sun sign, a moon sign, a rising sign. Those are usually the, the three main ones that people um, talk about. But then the planet is in, there's all the nine planets. And if you look at a birth chart, they're in all different um, zodiac signs. So um, someone's Mercury could be in Pisces or in Gemini. So then that tells you how they communicate because um, Mercury is all about communication. And it just helps you understand. So it helps has helped me understand myself. Like, okay, I, I have a fire sign. I'm an Aries. I really like to start projects and I don't typically finish them. I really like to do things before I, um, think before I think fully about them, um, just very instinctual. And, and so these qualities, then I can understand myself more and be like, well, what am I to do with these qualities? Like, and how will they be negative if I, if I just let them run amok and how will they be positive if I, hone them in and work with them um, with intention. And so same with the moon sign, the moon is like, so the sun is like what brings you, what gives you vital force in your life. And the moon's more like your soul and how you feel and how you feel nurtured and safe. And then your rising is like how you are presented to the world. Like when people first meet you, what do they, what impression do they get? Well, and what, then, was that, what was the impression you had for me? I guess oh. Like signs. <laughs> Okay, let me think. Um, I mean, you could be like Sagittarius rising or, but are you saying the impression that, that I think of your sun sign or your? All, all of it. I want to just Do you know? Do you I know? Do, I actually do. I know my, yeah, sun, moon, and rising. <laughs> okay, now I get to guess and you'll, and then hopefully you'll tell me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to guess that you're a... I don't know. I'm just getting a lot of Sagittarius from you. So I don't know where that's from and Gemini and maybe Virgo. Um, I don't know which, which of which, but maybe some Scorpio. What do you, yeah, did Scorpio I get any of this? Good. Yeah. Scorpio okay. for uh, rising. So that's like oh, nice. how I'm perceived, right? Yes. And that's and then, actually the first thing that hit my mind, but I didn't go with that. So I should have okay. gone with awesome. mm -hmm. All good. All good. And then, yeah. uh, uh, what's it called moon is Sagittarius so for sure you, you got that yes um, and, yeah and then Libra is the sun I think nice. communication was too, so Mercury mm -hmm. yeah, yeah Libra is all about communication too very harmonious balanced equal fair communication and relationship excellent um, mastery basically so that's awesome cool cool yeah yeah, that's interesting. I mean, the people say it's sometimes Gemini too, like like because of the bubbliness in a way. I guess like when I get to know people, I get to be more bubbly. And then like first when I prove first people, I have to be like more serious, so like Scorpio. But definitely I feel like really like a lot of times like emotional, I guess, but it's just like how I deal with it, I guess, has been like different. Like don't really know how to like really deal with the heavy emotions. So basically like, you know, love music, but don't really have like a creative outlet except for um you know writing as well too and maybe playing basketball and whatnot but like this new transition i like my like i'm 30 so it's like my saturn's return it's like kind of like settling in so it's like connecting mm -hmm. into um the like my new path as a scorpio is is that what is that truly after saturn like that's what the sending is like the saturn's rising is like after saturn's rising it's like you're kind of going into your ascending sign is that the theory I haven't heard that theory. I, I mm -hmm. might have missed something or, yeah, I'm not sure. But it also, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, it's all good. I'm just curious. I mean, it's always yeah. fun to talk about it in a way with friends and stuff. I don't, I mean, I do feel like we're still creator. We can always get the qualities. Like, I love the quality of mastery and communication resonates with me. Like, I love to get, you know, better at things and, um, you know, improve on my craft and I'm really passionate about what I do and I love communicating and getting better in that and relationships are really important to me. Harmony is really important to me and uh, yeah, balance too. So when I'm not balanced, when I'm not like accepting about what's happening, then I could get like depressed or 
not feeling the high vibe, but it's always, I mean, still, even that stems from my own beliefs and reflections. So it's all good. Astrology is cool. I think sometimes like if people talk about it too much and kind of like, like make it life or death. I, mean, I like how my, one of my mentors mentioned it like as a blueprint, almost like a map that you could go by. Um, and that's totally cool too. But even yeah. that, it's like, we're aware of it. We're creating, we're, we're the creators of the astrology. Yes, totally. We created it so that it could help us as a tool and not everyone needs it as their tool. Um, I personally have needed it to like get, get direction and focus in my life and clarity, but not everyone needs it at all. So. What about you? So when you said, um, well, you actually didn't tell me your, like, what was your yeah. direction? Yeah. Direction. You said Aries sun. And- yeah. Aries sun. Um, uh, Aries sun, Libra rising and Capricorn moon. Interesting. Cool. And yeah, the other thing I wanted to say about that though, is like the house that it's in, I've noticed really means a lot to like, if my Aries is in Virgo's house, um, which is the sixth house, then I'm, I've got a lot of Virgo energy, especially since my North node is there. You were asking about nodes and nodes are like, so what I've learned in astrology is that where your Pluto is and where your nodes are is like kind of the bottom line of your life soul story. And so the nodes are the South there. They're referred to as the nodes of the moon, um, which is like the moons represents the soul actually. So the South node is where you came from, what you're really familiar with and experienced with. And like, you just come in with all these gifts of that energy and, but you want to get away from that because you're way too in that. So you want to go to the opposite side. So South and North nodes are always opposite. So you want to experience the opposite to balance yourself out in this lifetime. Yeah. That's, the, that's the idea. So if my South node is, was in Libra, I came in with incredible skills of mediation and um, just relationship skills. And, but now I'm, it's like my soul's like, well, we got to get over to Aries and like be Aries and like be the opposite of that and be free and be just like nice. um, all that stuff. So yeah, the no- the the nodes are important. Um, and then Pluto, but do you have so, any? Yeah. Yeah, cool. That's, that's awesome. It sounds like a lot of balancing, a lot of Mm-hmm. it's almost like if you think about if we do have all these past lives and it's just like you started off as a life with this and this karma and this direction with that sign it's kind of like you're going to balance it out and even almost like a clock like you're even going you have to experience everything because like even um in this many lifetimes or like a cycle like it just keeps on going that you just you know experiencing this and then you're experiencing this and experiencing this like balancing everything out as you said and that's an interesting point of view with astrology. If if it is like a clock, like I don't like for experience wise, like time doesn't exist, but maybe like in the soul's perspective, there is this trajectory or cycle. Yeah, I mean, if you think of um, time doesn't exist, well, if you think of time in the spiral form that it more right. resonates with, then you do see that that clock Density. or spiral thing. Cool. Um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Cool. yeah is there anything else you're passionate you're passionate about you want to connect with flow with um let's see hmm. dancing oh yeah, oh, yeah. i want i want to ask you about uh it's like sexual sovereigns you want to go into mm-hmm. that yeah sure yeah what is that yes so let's see ever since i was who knows how age how old I just felt like I wanted to be nude around people. Like I wanted to trigger people to be like, yo, if my body is naked, like offends you that there's a serious problem here (laughs) because we've been conditioned that our bodies like are not supposed to be seen, that there's shame around our bodies, Mm -hmm. around pleasure, around sexuality, like that women are, like if they have a lot of sex, they're sluts and right, like that's not, and, and that's not cool. Yeah. It's all about taboo. And it's like, I'm trying to, my, one of my facets is that I'm trying to break that whole paradigm 
by merging the like you, the virgin and the slut like they're one and they broke it up in the bible or the bible story they they split them but they're not split like they they were together they didn't like mary had sex like she didn't they did know how to immaculate conceive but they did have sex like that was a beautiful sacred wonderful thing so the fact that sex could be anything else is uh i think it's like a dysfunction in our society mm-hmm. and so, so how, do, how do you view it so do you feel it like as making love or do you see it as like a like a friendship thing expression of something like sexual expression or how do you see it yeah i think there's everyone has their own path with it but for me i see it as like um making love like or it's like spiritual communion like if it's like experiencing union and for me if i find a partner that is wanting to meet me at every level friendship um and like all all the levels then then sex is appropriate um friendship romantic like solid i don't know so how would just you, like a an agreed yeah you go yeah how, I agree. Okay, I love that agreement. But it's like, how would you differ between like friendship and then romance with that? That's a good question. I think um, that is such a good question. So right now I'm exploring that with a a partner, and it's like we have to we go back and forth because if you're too lost in the romance, then you there's more pressure. And there's more like on the relationship. There's but more like you, agreements or like labels because of the yeah. romance part, like your boyfriend, girlfriend, or so yeah. it's like you kind of label it partner because it's like it's playable almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even just today, he was like, Yeah, I've been having like we've been having too much like sexual talk, like it's been distracting me. Like we let's pull it back, let's do like the friend friend vibe again and i was like yes i'm totally on board like you know it's just like bring the energy back to yourself and be like i am me i'm whole and complete on my own i love you i want to relate with you but like we always have to bring it back to ourselves so what is what is compared to sexual talk versus like just continue <laughs> like i don't know yeah, that's what kind of that's okay nice. good question well like <laughs> Like I'm a really sexual person, so like we could talk, we could just, I don't know what we would say, but it's like just being flirty and like talking about like sending like funny emojis with like cucumbers or nice. like all the sexual parts and like talking about or like sending like a nude photo or, you know, being sexy, like, I don't know, whatever you, you know what sexting is, I'm sure you yeah. do, right? <laughs> I do, but it's just like, it's it's a different expression because like my beliefs on sex and my own viewpoints on love is like, it's different. It's like, it's almost an avenue. Like I'm totally open-minded on everything. It's just like, it's really interesting to hear like other people's point of view. And it's like, it's great to talk about it too, especially on like this. Yeah. So just being open about it, like, like, yeah, about sexuality, like even the questions, like, did you pleasure yourself today? Or what did, you know, like being super open about it. Awesome yeah yeah and that doesn't and if you can do that and not get distracted or consumed or think it's bad that you would even say anything like that then you are in a healthy relationship with your sexuality but if you if it's hidden or if it's like uncomfortable then it's like well you might need to look at that and be like well what about this you know what kind of shame might be involved in this because I think we've been taught really hardcore to like have shame about sex and our bodies. Oh, yeah. And it's so ingrained that we, it's so hard to break out of it. Yeah. It's huge programming, religious programming and everything. I mean, that's the main part too. It's like, like you hit it right in the middle of like, um, slut, or if you're doing this and that, or if you want to have sex, sex before marriage, you've got multiple partners, whatever that is, or like, it just, you know, yeah. go out for a night. But again, it's like, even with, like the porn industry, it's like adult entertainment or you go to um, a club, like a strip club or something. It's like all of this mixed ideas about love or not even love, but about sexuality, um, you know, going to strippers or something, wh- whatever it is, dance parties. 
but again it's like I think you do like that's huge especially as this human condition it's like sex is part of life and I was talking to a few friends about manifesting and the connection towards like orgasm or that sexual experience is like it's is really similar the more open and you see the process of it the more you can connect into those bigger manifestations and that that journey of like the connection towards you and god or even source with your partner or even you know the flirtation and whatnot. absolutely yes that energy is so it's like it's called eros like it's it's like this energy of like uh this tension or this like it's like you it the watered down word is flirty but it's like you create tension and you create this like kind of vortex of like energy where you can create from there and i think that's what like that you can be in eros with anything with like nature or with a person or with your a project that you're doing so you can bring that sexual energy into your whole life if you're consciously yeah. like aware of you're oh, like absolutely. what to do with your orgasms <laughs> like awesome. what's this orgasm for <laughs> like yeah it's like so you're moving that energy so when you're saying what's that orgasm for it's like almost like you're in the moment and then you're trying to transition into something for your life or what is it yeah. specifically oh well what do you mean because you asked like what is this orgasm for and what what do you mean oh, by that? yeah so, i mean you yeah. could you could use orgasms for like consciously manifesting things or trying to for projects like okay gotcha. i um I, women i and it's a di it's important i think to differentiate between women and men orgasms too because when men orgasm they usually they ejaculate and that's typically not so beneficial or life-giving it's um so that's a, a whole thing that like I hope many men can learn. It's like, if you really want to have a more conscious sex or life, like to learn how to circulate your energy and have an internal orgasm instead of ejaculation, gotcha. um, women too. But for men, I think it's more important. That's a whole nother part of changing the sexual, um, the sexual experience and narrative because yeah when you look at porn the whole goal is to orgasm but like that shouldn't be yeah. the goal the goal is to like really be present and beautiful feel. Yeah. yeah i mean there's a book that I kind of got into it's like mantech chia's mm -hmm. it was something yeah i forgot what the name was um but really even that it's like the whole principle of like i guess Dallas principle of like everything is energy it's like you're cultivating that sexual essence but also it's like the practice of it, the intention of it too. It's like you are there to pleasure your lover, and then you're you're there to, to kind of like connect even deeper to your spirituality by doing those practices. And it's yeah. like I, for that, like that makes sense on that essence of orgasm. But again, like you said, it's like you know a lot of people can just like uh, masturbate, and then you know it's just one and done. It's just like it's kind of like yeah. that, and you kind of get used to that too. Yeah. So. Um, Again, maybe I just want to hear your thoughts on that. It's like regarding like that conscious relationship with um, sexuality that even um, the romance part of that is that more of a, it, it's more, it sounds like more of a communication agreement part of like, this is, it's almost like you get a feel of like, this is what you want. And then this is kind of like, um, you know, what's working for you. Um, I'm trying to just muster up a question, but I guess, um, like, what is it about these conscious relationships that, like, gets you to the next level of what you want, like, as a soul? Um, let's see. That's a great question. So when I, um, when I left Maui um, a year plus ago, over, just a little over a year ago, I went on a big adventure, a soul adventure to just kind of, I, I was just breaking up with someone and it was really a big breakup and it was really intense. And, and I, it was also really freeing and, and beautiful. But so in that, I, I discovered, as I was on that journey, I discovered this woman, Kim Anami and her work. And she does work with couples, with individuals about 
um, basically like how to live your most amazing life through your sexuality. And basically she has a great podcast called orgasmic enlightenment. And basically she said that like, especially for women, she says that most women are under fucked. And so I was like, really? What does, what does this mean? By the way, like, it, you, sorry, yeah. go ahead. I was going to just, I mean, well, first it was just like, just from that word. It's like, is that, because you know, some people get turned on about that word fucked. And then it's just like, what is, what is the, what is your consensus on that? Like, is it based on how you use that word or is it kind of like a foul like language kind of oh, thing? Or? I think it's based on how you, you, like, if you have a safe container of love and respect, that word is, can be really empowering. Yeah. I think. And so, and I think it's, you know, it depends on what archetype you're playing. Like, do you want to be this like, like peaceful, like spiritual human that doesn't fuck or do you want to be like your animal human right. self that's like Beautiful. i'm fucking pissed like you yeah. know there's and two just different bring that out we're everything right so that's what my journey's been has been like i was really like spiritual and not really embodied but i think sexuality brings in embodiment and it's like more your primal nature and your like your desires and like we have that as humans we have that but we if we're run by it and we we let it run us like we get we just aren't conscious of what's happening kind of like what we're going back to with the fear it's like it's our lower chakra it's our survival it's you know it's it can be dark or you know weird so getting getting clear on the lower chakra vibes and and owning them or whatever is i think important so that's a long version to your question but (laughs) but about the word but i think after um I'm going to cut you off after the, uh, like you were talking about your friend's podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So Kim Anami. So she said, women are under fucked. And if you become a well-fucked woman, you're going to live your best life ever. And I was like, really, what does that mean? Like, how do I do that? And so that was kind of like the start of my journey last year. It was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I don't have a partner, but she suggests all these dildos to use. And she suggests like practices and, I was like, okay, well, I'll get those and I'll do my thing and I'll explore. And I, and then someone handed me this book called um, The Art of Sexual Ecstasy. It's a really thick book. It's like tantric practices for Western lovers. And so I just kept exploring like, okay, well, this isn't, you know, women need to get to know their vaginas more. Like there's so much power in there. There's so much potential. <laughs> like there they don't just make babies, they make infinite potential. Yeah. So, right. So just to um, just, it's like a self-discovery, like, oh my gosh, like this is a portal to everything I want. And so, like you said, soul journey, I want to live my soul's purpose. I want to activate my, my sheer radiance and ecstasy and bliss and joy. And so, um, Kim says, suggests that if you do have enough sex consciously, you will, you will get there easily. And I'm like, that's the path that I want to right. take. So awesome. yeah. Do you visualize too? I know like some questions about like even law of attraction is like people will actually visualize like their ideal partners or ideal like mate, like kind of like connecting on that level. Um, no, I don't visualize the person. I mean, I have had like visions of what that person might look like, but it's not, but the current person I'm seeing doesn't fit that description of that, what, it, what that man might look like. So for me, it's just a call, like a being ready. Like it was so weird in June. So I've been on this journey and then like halfway through the, the year, I wrote on Instagram of all places, just really boldly out of the blue. Hey, I'm looking for a conscious lover, someone that I can do conscious sex work with for three times a week and like a nice long session. I put it out there to Instagram, like a freaking, like a freaking, um, newspaper ad, like I'm looking for this. And then literally the day later, this guy, my friend called me and was like, Hey, you want to chat? And like, we've been friends for like many, many years, but then all of a sudden we're talking and then all of a sudden we're talking every day. And then I'm like, Hmm, maybe this is the person that I've asked for. And, and that's the thing about manifestation. Like I'm, we haven't even had sex yet, to be honest, but we've been cultivating a friendship and we've been, we talk about it all the time, what it would be like. 
and that we really want to be friends first before we do that because we want to be really conscious about it Sacred. so Beautiful. I thought it would just happen right away like oh I'm just going to find this guy and we're going to agree that this is the rules that we're following with the conscious sex and then we're going to do it but that's not my idea of how it would go is not what's happening but I know that what's happening is a better way because it's slower and it's more more conscious and more yeah aligned for me yeah so even with that too it's like that slower process do you feel like it's more like you said aligned so i'm guessing it's it feels more in pace with like what your soul wants because i know there's like different relationships more like you know there's attraction there's it could be yeah having sex the first night and it's just like that could break, make or break a relationship. Like it's like lust and then love, or then, you know, it could be just a relationship with just sex. And really like, yeah. if you're just hanging out, it's like, it's not even fun, you know, it's like, so it's like all those dynamics, I guess my question is like, I mean, I guess almost a lot of people do like that long-term thing of kind of feeling each other out, like giving tests and connecting over that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that my soul some on some level wants that more long term thing. I didn't really wasn't fully aware of it because I had just gotten out of a relationship that I, I thought I wanted that but it didn't happen. So I was kind of like bummed out. But I think that my I was just denying denying that that's what my soul wants is like a more long term committed, sus like really sustained partnership. And so that's I, what I'm working towards, which is kind of scary for me, but it's I think what my soul wants, at least now, and I'll see what happens, but um, yeah, then, but then other people could make agreements like, you know, and, and I wanted to refer to Bridget's podcast because her and Jocelyn did a really good one about sexuality and yeah, Jocelyn, like if, what's her last name? Dare. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know about her. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And so like in that podcast, they talk about, yeah, if you have sex right away, what happens hormonally with men and women, like it's not ideal. And so well, you got to be aware and conscious of like what's happening with your bodies. So they recommend like wait at least three. If you want to have any kind of sustained relationship, man and woman, like sexually, it's good to wait like three months to like talk about what your intentions are, get to know each other at least three months. That's yeah. So I mean, that, that's like almost like a golden nugget of like, that's a, that's an awesome relationship. We both could be, you know, in three months and not have physical intercourse, like sexual intercourse. It's just like, that's huge. Exactly. And why is it the norm that we just like all, you know, that's the most intimate thing you can do is like put a penis in someone's vagina and like rub against each other. Like, why would you do that if you don't even know the person? Like, yes, it's great. It feels good. But like, you have to expect that to be a one time or a, a few time things, not to be anything super sustainable. Because it yeah. takes a lot more communication, I think, before I mean, you do that. To know sure. what's I, happening. I think for sure, there's so many taboos and even like porn really fucked everything up with a lot of relationships. Maybe it's good for some people. But I think like if, if that's the ideal relationship of, you know, waiting three months and kind of like building that layer of connection and spirituality and feeling each other's you know personality and um your body in that level it's like that's all that's really good but again it's like if you know you grew up with that thing on you know whether it's magazines or online porn or just like how women are stereotyped in entertainment and you build on those archetypes then it's like it becomes like candy is our pleasure and yeah yeah, we all grew up on that. And like, even, even me, like, I'm, I'm exploring. Yeah, like, even, yeah, I, I was like, <laughs> I'm on a journey of like, getting, figuring out sex. And it's like, even the last, in this last week, I clicked erotica online, because I'm curious, like, what's out there in terms of porn. And I watched some stuff, and I was like, enjoying it. But then I was like, Oh, what? This is weird. Like, I don't, it's just so, it doesn't feel that good. And it's just, yeah, I wish there was another way to. Right. You know, so what, what feels good to you? What feels good is, um, in terms of like looking at. No, just, yeah. Like what, I guess, what feels good. Yeah. Like excitement wise, if it is erotica, for example. 
Like, is that pref individual preference or is it something that actually connects into what feels good to you, like soul wise? Maybe it's the same thing, I don't know. Oh, do you mean, um, I'm not fully understanding the question, but um, like what feels good if I were to take out looking at people on screens and just do my own thing with sexuality? Sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what question I was asking, sorry, it was pretty vague. I just, whatever flows. <laughs> I don't know what the, what the question is. Okay. I don't know what I'm trying to ask, to be honest, or what yeah. direct message is. Okay, okay, here it is. Here's what I discovered with that experience with like revisiting porn just recently. I was like, it doesn't feel good to look at, to externalize the experience. So I like to internalize the experience, whether I'm closing my eyes and visualizing like a scene of my own self making love or just closing my eyes and feeling my own body more and feeling my like literally doing sensual practices that bring me more into my experience and my body because ultimately like this is all I have like I don't have the you know if the power went out I wouldn't get to watch that stuff so how can I really like work with pleasure with just what just my body and I think that's what sexual like or empowerment and sexual sovereignty is it's like I have this body like what can I do with it um even like asking to, a man to like give me um like to be a sexual partner is like getting something from the external so how can we just be aware that like we can meet our own needs with pleasure um whether it be dancing or self-pleasure or um, breast massage or whatever feels really pleasurable to us um, to do that more often than to go to like watch someone else do it right because it's your body it's like your expression it's like you're connecting to your own body too right it's like yeah that's what it's about yeah and it's just like erasing yeah just like forgetting what the external tells you is normal because like i had a conversation with in this podcast yesterday about death is like we externalize uh we everything that we see on the screen i don't know who i was talking to but everything we see on the screen is supposedly normal like violence or communication in movies or porn it's like that's not normal that's not right. the human that i want to be that's why i don't really watch movies that much or it's like no that's not me and yeah yeah well I think that's 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 awesome and that's super effective too because I think there's a lot of like insecurity and almost like what is this new or maybe not new like what is authentic sexuality and I feel like as a human being you know with the condition of the body and having that energy it's like we are all kind of figuring this out and there's always like you said there's this like there's um whatever's on the screen can like affect us but it's like what is it that we want and it's like i don't think you can actually know until you find out like connecting into what that is like even if if you know even this like talking could be like, taboo right for some people it's easier than others and then you know sometimes you could just uh talk about it which is cool and it's like what is it and it's like i think it's cool to to be clear on what is what is it because essentially it's like a person can think of sex and it's just like really uh, one dimensional and it can be just like a snap of fingers and it's done and I think what people are looking for is that essence of like even the practice even the act of it like making it not I don't want to use the word spiritual but like I think you use like present like being present with like even cultivating it so that it it creates yeah. that excitement it creates that um, attraction Absolutely. Like you said, when I was talking about my vagina, you're like, it's infinite. There's it's infinite. infinite. <laughs> it's an infinite vortex of portal. It's a portal of infinity. Yeah. That is how, so you could take like the two minute sexual, I'm pleasuring myself. And then I just came for two minutes. You can take that as being like one point. And then you can, with the practice that you were just talking about, the cultivation of the energy and the practice you can then go from that to experiencing like hours of pleasure and orgasm. Like yeah. those are two very different things. And I, I'm only like 
uh, you know, not very far along on the spectrum, but I know that that's what my path is, is to cultivate that um, hours of ecstasy and bliss because Beautiful. I, yeah. So it, and it takes time and it, it takes commitment. Just like you were saying, it's spiritual. It's a spiritual practice. Like when you meditate every day or you, you do have to do it every day to, and like build on it. And for sure, it's like that vessel of infinity. Your body is infinity. Your vagina is that walking infinity. Or, or um, it's it, it can be, and it is. And it's also that you you want that and cultivate it because it sounds like resonant and coherent for like what you want as a soul. So again, it's like that's awesome because of communication, right? It's like you you kind of investigated that, and it sounds like you want this path. And again, it's like you to manifest that partner. It's like it's kind of building that trust, but like even he can be you he is you and it's basically that that trust and clarity and communication to get what you want or to yeah. co-create it yeah it's a pretty big deal it feels like that thanks for honoring that part of my path <laughs> i'm curious about your experience with that all that subject yeah um i'm kind of i feel like personally it's a little insecure but i'm glad like talk, i'm not i mean i can still talk about it, so it's cool um yeah, I think, I mean, my first girlfriend was, I mean, I, I, I have to say first, but it's just, I don't, I haven't like really dated in the spectrum of my life in the sense of like first girlfriend had like symptoms of uh, schizoaffective and basically it was like, it was kind of a nurturing relationship and I was like going through my own uh, spiritual awakening and psychosis. So it was more of like a one dimensional, the communication wasn't like fully there and it's basically uh, it was emotional as physical, but it's also connecting on to like I didn't know what really sex was. Like when even when we we're doing like intercourse, it was still it was still kind of like blinded through pornography or just like how other people viewed things. So again, it's like I, it almost was like a broken shell too because the pattern of me not being able to express myself or connecting into that. It's like I like I love you know, movement, working out, like really express my body. But again, it's like the intimacy part has been very um, difficult in that sense, especially, you know, with relationships. And, you know, there's times there's like people don't want to talk about it publicly or it seems like I can't say it with a, a friend. So it's like almost like the sexual part was blocked by the mental part of like overthinking and like what is right, like what is comfortable. And it's basically like, okay, well, even going on with the experience or lack of experience that I have, it's like, uh, it's still coming from, it's like, yeah, I want to get better because I want to be a good partner. And it's just like, even that kind of like um, the craft of it, or just like being with a lover, it, it's, it's still different because of, I still had emotional issues about attachment and connections. Like even, when we have sex it's like there's still um it's like it feels great or like orgasm and and kind of like cuddling everything else after but still it's almost like it was like a lot of body attraction but then it was hard to kind of get like the whole spectrum of relationship which i wanted and yeah. that's what it was like, i think ideally you know really amazing sex but also the like the friendship, the romance. I honestly don't think I really had like a really romantic, like I'm ideally, I'm, I feel like I'm very romantic, but then it never really created that. Like, I always feel like I could have been better, like with the romance, with uh, relationships, with um, generating, with, with a lot of things. And that is still a lot of the thought process still. And it's like, in, in the end, it was so much growth spiritually and personally, but again, it's like, I don't mind dating. I don't mind having partners or sexual experiences with that. Again, it's just like going in my own taboos, my belief systems. Um, but ultimately it, it's like a weird place that I'm in where it's like, I definitely believe in the power of orgasm and relationships and romance but it's almost like trust issues still like whether it's myself or with other people and mm -hmm. yeah it's it's not like i want to go on a dating site or like 
posts like this is my ideal relationship and it feels like i feel like i just have to trust someone first and it's like and they even when they trust it's like there has to be like a clear communication of like what like what wants to get done with the relationship because i don't want like the drama of you know i did something you know wrong or it wasn't agreed upon or wasn't communicated yeah. so it's like yeah communication is huge for me and i think that's like the issue with it yeah right on thanks for sharing that yeah any takeaways from that <laughs> yeah like, just yeah yeah it sounds like you do want that and you're curious about what a relationship is like that meets that full spectrum of connection like friendship and trust and sexuality and romance um but you just haven't really experienced it and there might be other things in the way of it and but you're open to having that and it's just a matter of like kind of deconditioning maybe a bit or and then and then finding someone who's willing to communicate about all these things because you're right like you don't want drama you don't want expectations or like miscommunications like oh I thought you were gonna that you were yeah. this or you want like you have to be clear like I want this I want this I don't want this what do you want are we in agreement like and then yeah, check in and tablets. then you gotta yeah so oh sorry and then you're, you're going in a flow I will like go ahead and, and then you gotta check in like weekly to even see if that's still the case like you can't you can't like assume that the person's going to stay the same you have to like well how's the things feeling for you now <laughs> you know it's like things change yeah, so communication is huge and that's the hard part because it's like and there's attachment like if if someone wants something else or it's just like a breakup or it's not working out or even you know both sides it's like it, it does change and even spiritual beliefs or sexual beliefs romantic beliefs can change and i guess that's the hard part too because like what is the archetype of relationship it's like is it something we watched at like aladdin or like a disney movie and like is that what love is because essentially it's like what what is love will define your relationships and it's like if you fall, fell in love and you feel that and then kind of got disappointed because of how it manifests and it's like it's not here yeah. or it's like it's tricky because it, it goes back to you like that chemistry of like what what love is to us like do we actually believe there's chemistry or is like it's something else like i believe love has to come from source it is like our initial or even natural baseline loveness of who we truly are but ideally it's like also there could be catalysts from the relationships and the pleasures and the joys that can be um, attracted and manifested from that so again it's like it goes back to our thoughts and, and taboos, but I feel like e either way, it's like, I don't want to be just sitting, like doing nothing. It's like, I think relationship is part of that journey because they're myself. And that's the weird part too. It's like brothers and sisters, like even the spiritual path, you see everyone is one as you, but then it's also, it's like, there's this, there's sexual energy or attraction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a continual exploration of what, how does this, how do we relate? Like, do we pick one person and just have sex with them? And, or does that end like, or is that really temporary? And we have to acknowledge that and make it like, is the whole marriage paradigm, is that going to end? Like, we don't know. Like there could be, cause we're going into the age of Aquarius and like, I've thought about it. Like, is that just an old archetype, this archetype of the family and the long-term relationships or because my friend's polyamory and I just hear all her stories and she's not going to have a kid she's agreed that she doesn't she's very like Aquarius she's like I'll probably just adopt a kid when I'm like uh the age of my grandma and just you know like like the the tribes used to like the the elders would raise the kids like and that she's just going to, and she has multiple lovers and I hear about them and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe you do this. And I personally can't see myself doing that, but I wonder if that's like, because I want to experience family in this life or because I'm still conditioned that that's, yeah, that's something I want. <laughs> yeah. Cause sometimes like it, it, 
because we're our brothers and sisters, so it's almost can be like how we're structured as a society. It's like you get tax breaks or, you know, like marriages kind of right. have these benefits. You're a we now because you're not I or her or him. It's like you're a we. So it's everything. It's like the whole psychology, the, the energy, the life, the, the resources all shift. So it's, it's a create, it's like a mind fuck of, um, yeah, it's like, it separates literally like houses are built family, this, this family, this family, this family, this family, but it's like, we're one family and like, we're one, yeah. but we're still structured that way. It is pretty, um, uh, that's, yeah, it's in a way it's scary. Cause it's like, it's so deep into our psychology. But again, it's like I have a family and I have brothers and sisters that are starting families. So um, I can't really say it's bad. I don't or, think it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I no, you go. You're going to flow too now. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it's like, it, it's, I don't know. It's like, it's hard. It's almost like a kind of grief because it's like the, the truth is that we're one family, we're one. But then, like I said, I'm mentioning the, the structures of, of family and, you know, how romance typically is. It's like you're, you're on this partner, you have this partner, you marry that person, and then you have a family with them. But it sounds like if, if it is Age of Aquarius, which, it, and going to fourth density of love understanding that we are this one big family, um, then it's like what happens to the actual families that are in houses and, you know, that are labeled as families, Mr. and Mrs. This. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I feel like I'm in the middle. Like, I feel like for my life, it's like, I'm, I want to do both. I want to merge them somehow, like have a partner and a family, but also extend that feeling of like love that we're creating in that nucleus to the community. So like, our love that we create is not just for us and for our own needs. Like we were talking about the self-serving, but it's for everyone. And I want to be able to cultivate that love and then share, amplify it as much as I can with my community and like give more love and expand that. Like, so that, so that we are creating that global family feeling. Cause yeah. I have, I have that so deeply in me. I'm like, I just want to love everybody and include them in, and yeah it's tough because like even <laughs> if i post like infinite love and i love everybody because it's true it's like it is one love and one energy but then you know people that are in you know relationships that are married it's like they kind of like they can't receive it because it's like it's not in their belief system or religion so again it's like i think i i, I am like guiding through this like connection towards love like love in the sense of uh, not marriage because it, it doesn't I mean I feel like in the cr middle as well too but ideally I think sexual expression is super important and then whether it's a romantic relationship or just like um, connecting to your own body and other people's sexual energy then it's like there's actually acceptance and open-mindedness towards that so um, yeah. it's it's a work and this is a transition, I do feel like there's still a lot of taboos that I'm holding on. And it's like, what would my family think? Or what would my friends think? But really like that's still some transition. I don't know where, where my mind, body, spirit will like lead to, who knows? Maybe I, I will get married or, you know, be in that kind of relationships, maybe not. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check in in like five years and see where we're at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like three. What, yeah, what? checking into that uh, space of where that like cosmic plus like 3D stuff is, right? Of like, <laughs> of like where this may go. Who, who knows? Maybe an alien, like an alien race would come up and they're just like, okay, this is actually, all of this is fucked up. Like <laughs> it's like how we live is like, you're supposed to be in pleasure, you're supposed to be in joy or spiritual cosmic connection, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I personally would feel really uncomfortable in an orgy, but I know a lot of people do it. And I know that like back in the other Aquarian age with the golden age, like 60,000 years ago, that was a thing. Like it's been a thing. That's like free love. We're all one. Let's all make love together at the same time. It's like that, like I'm not there yet, but maybe we're headed there. I don't know. 
<laughs> Who knows, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? knows? <laughs> but it's just an exploration and we're here. I just want to be able to help people on their own journey of of talk, being able to talk about it, be able to like explore what, what works for them and what they want, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I see that you have the energy that's like really open and, you know, I feel pretty comfortable like talking about these uh, experiences or sexuality. It's like definitely like pinpointing like what I want as, I guess, even a man. Like even like saying that, it's like I never really identify as like, okay, you know, Asian or man or woman, you know what I mean? It's just like, I was typically just in awareness a lot of time, but still it's like how people see me, it's like still going through this 3D experience of um, what is this Randy Sin body mind going go through? And definitely with the romance and sexuality part of, of like, there has to be something like a direction. And I feel like, Again, like I said before, it's like maybe the healing is in, in sex because of whatever um, past or experience you've had as a child, that it can be an expression, it can be freedom, it can be something explore, it just maybe wasn't nurtured so that, um, you know, the relationships I have is like, maybe it was just purely about sex and it wasn't about the relationship, it was not healing. So again, the yeah. avenue of that, if we can manifest anything, it's like, why not be really clear on what that is? And then maybe yeah. just like connecting them to that, being very specific on yes. um, what it is. And I think that's, that's huge. And it's a great reminder that you, have, you hold that space and have that different perspective that most people don't. Yeah, you can create anything you can create. And like, you just spoke to sexual healing and that's a real thing. That's what I think what we all need more of, like, uh, yeah, so call it in. Call it in, harness it. Cool. All right, and Dara, is there anything else you'd like to talk about or have questions or anything? Uh, I think I'm good for now just because we, we covered a lot today. Maybe we can do another one sometime. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Um, thank you for the time and yeah. Enjoy yeah, this day. Enjoy Hawaii. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it was really nice to get to know you. And thanks for putting this on your YouTube channel. Yay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. See you in diet. Bye.